Hey everybody, welcome to the Fire It Up with CJ show. We've been talking to Anthony Brinkley about his book, You Can't Run Away From You, A Young Man's Journey to Himself. And um, in the um, first segment, we were talking about um, Anthony's experience um, in um, the military and um, his life experiences as um, a younger boy and the trauma. And in the second um, segment, we were talking about um, how you moved yourself towards a place of healing um, with resolution with your dad, um, resolution with your family, and the sense, the younger version of yourself that felt abandoned during that time. Um, I want to talk about um, your work. Um, I know that you work with a lot of young, um, local young men about the challenges of life. And um, I want to get a sense of, you know, okay, I've heard this. I, things are now welling up for me. I've listened to Anthony's interview and now I'm like, now what? There's so much that, you know, because oftentimes when this stuff wells up, it's like, now what do I do with this? Um, what would you, and you've talked about supporters. What do you recommend the young men that you coach? First thing, um, I, I do this to a story. So there were these two young ladies that were uh, drug addicts. True mm -hmm. story. Mm -hmm. And the one said, do you know why we do drugs? And the other said, no, not really. She said, the, other, the one that said, asked the question, she said, the reason we do drugs is because drugs gives us the ability not to feel. Mm -hmm. and, and so when I talk to people about what they're going through, the first thing I tell them is you have to allow yourself to feel it. Feelings are not positive or they're not negative. Feelings are neutral. It's what you do with the feelings and how you process the feelings that would what is determinative of if, if it's a positive, negative thing. We've taught people in our culture, um, especially like men, uh, many cultures will teach you men don't cry, men don't show emotions. And when we tell them that, first of all, they're not men. They're like pre adolescent. So I teach people half of learning is learning. The other half is unlearning what you've been taught. Mm -hmm. So we've taught many people the wrong things, you know. And so now you have to unpack what have you been taught as it relates to feelings. And if you've been taught the wrong thing, then we have to unpack that and say, the first thing we want you to do is feel your feelings. I'm angry. I'm frustrated. I want to hurt somebody. Um, I feel like choking somebody. Okay. Now, we're not going to do that. So now that you said that, now you tell the people we're not going to judge you for your feelings. Mm -hmm. So once you allow someone to feel something, then you tell them the thing that you're upset about and you've got your feelings out. Now look at that same thing again. Now you can be have, you, have, you can have more clarity and you, because your eyes aren't jaded through emotions as much. Mm -hmm. And so you go from feeling to now let's try to deal with it. Mm -hmm. And dealing becomes, and if, and if you're able to get your feelings out effectively, you can look at the, the circumstances that cause you to get upset. And now you might be able to say, hey, I know what I can do now because I'm not mm -hmm. responding out of emotion. Or I don't know what to do. And then they, now you open yourself up to resources like you, um, whether it's therapy, whether it's through your faith, whether it's through things that give you points of reflection and, and connect those pieces together. So now you go from feeling to dealing and so dealing is where you start to do the work and the ultimate end state is you are healed mm -hmm. and now you take your pain you take your test and it turns into a testimony it's almost like curriculum to help others go through their feelings and you can be part of dealing and then it becomes it, now they're healed mm -hmm. so that's the process and um and of that process i think that there's two parts Having just gone through that process myself, um, literally over the last month, um, what you've been talking about is something that I have literally been doing ever since um, I had shoved down my pain about being an Asian American and all the abuse and trauma that I received at an earlier age. And then I've been processing that. And um, there are two things that having just experienced that and still probably processing at some level, because here comes this interview out of the blue about this topic. Um, the um, first thing is feeling it hurts. It hurts no. like heck. And, you know, there are times when I would be walking along, everything's fine. I'd listen to a song and I would just be weeping. Like, Triggers. Yeah, just weeping. 
And it was so painful. And then sometimes it would manifest into physical pain where I was like, absolutely. Oh my gosh. My heart feels like someone is stabbing it. Like it would feel like sharp metal object through my heart. And these are all tiny little things, but they're all tiny little things that when ignored get to be a big thing. So, so you hitting it. It felt really awful. So what to do? <laughs> I could have, I did not take a, a big stiff drink. I did not use any drugs or anything. I, I didn't even take a Tylenol. I mean, I was just feeling the pain and you feel so raw. And as I went through the emotions, there was moving from like shock at the whole thing where they talk about, um, sure. people are also shocked to, um, to, to, fear, terror, shocked, fear, terror, abandonment, loneliness, um, to anger and just rage. And so I went through this whole stage and in, 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 in that particular order for me, and I think everyone's order, you may start off with anger. It just depends. Um, and then for me, I have a whole bunch of techniques. So, but what, how, I mean, it would, it was hard for me. I'm actually someone who's skilled, so I can actually feel the pain and then come with a whole bunch of meditations and, you know, get a massage. Like I have the resources to do that. How, how does someone deal with even feeling the pain? Cause it feels awful. Well, what I would suggest is, you know, this, 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 you know, we're not going to solve this obviously over the course of this conversation. I'd love to come talk to you again. Yeah. This, this is the point. This is the point I'm trying to make, though. The the first thing is you. We have to examine our orientation to ourselves, our orientation to information. There's a reason why that circumstance hurts you so badly. Like, like, and there's, it, it probably wouldn't hurt me as badly because we have different backgrounds. Mm -hmm. So if someone comes into my life and say, I'm going to do something. And then you walk away. That will take that historically, not now because I've dealt with it, but that will, if I don't deal with the feelings or I don't go back and unpack that, that particular thing, because it's, you, you got to remember, you just, you develop your orientation to yourself in the world around between the age, like five, somewhere around right. the tape. And just to clarify, so, so if someone does that, that triggers your abandonment issues. So if I'm like, Anthony, exactly. blah, 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 whatever, I'm out of here. Then you're kind exactly. of like, you know, that kind of triggers. So the way that you're personally wired, that triggers you into feeling the pain of abandonment all over again. Just and that's why, that's why, that's why, that's absolutely correct. And that's why I'm saying for you, probably what, what was for yours, regards to the trauma, the, the incident itself, it just, because you got to remember something about um, emotions. And triggers the emotion when you go. It could be twenty years ago, but the, the the feeling is just as visceral as the first time that was conceptually introduced to you. Mm -hmm. So, so what I tell people is back to the thing: half of learning is learning. What is the other half? One reason that people they they go, you know, the other half is unlearning. The one reason that people blow up is because they have been taught to ignore their feelings deny their feelings, suppress their feelings. And, and so now they have built up such a reservoir of negativity that it takes one little thing and then they explode or they have a, a magnified or exacerbated or aggravated response because you've been you've been doing something wrong. The little things you haven't addressed, you, you keep ignoring it. Mm -hmm. And one day your body just says, I'm going to shut it down. So what I would tell people is, you know, Look at the thing that got you really upset, and it wasn't that big a deal. It okay. represents something. And when you figure out what that is, you will, like when you talked about it, your physiology changes. Some people get hot. Mm -hmm. Their voice goes up. Their, their pupils dilate. They get amplified in their speaking because your body is going into fight or flight syndrome. So to me, the first thing is understand your orientation to information and experiences and say, why does that bother me? See, people just they just they, they typically get at the point and say, this bothers me. So don't do this. Right. But, but you have to get beyond saying this bothers me. You got to say, why does this bother? Me? Mm -hmm. And when you get to the why, then you will say it usually has to do with somebody else that ain't even in this circumstance. And now you can start to take control and you can be present. 
Because when you're re when you're reacting the wrong way, you're you're actually going back to the past. So you're not even living where you are now. Mm -hmm. So it's typically not big things. It's little things that become big things. So if we address the little things, we understand what we've been taught, and we become courageous enough to express our feelings and don't worry about how we're received. Mm -hmm. So I do this thing. I'll say this real quick. Um, I tell people in life, you have to be the first believer. When you started your show and the other things you've done, and when you're the first believer, because you got a vision, because God gave it to you. When I when I wrote my book, I didn't know my book was going to be the number one best selling in America. Me, the kid that was left at a hospital, the kid that people said was no good, this and that, the kid that wanted to die. And when I wrote my started writing my book, somebody said, Anthony, why would anyone want to hear what you have to say? No mm. one knows you. If you're not, if you don't become the first believer in your life, you're going to look for people to validate you. Never let someone co-sign on your vision who is blind. Mm -hmm. he, didn't <laughs> give, he, didn't, he didn't give you, he didn't get him the vision. So when you become the first believer, you, in many cases, you are the only believer. Mm -hmm. And so that's how Joe Bass can do what she's doing as an Asian American. Mm -hmm. That's how you doing what you're doing. So when you're the first believer, it can be lonely. But God is working out your product through your process mm -hmm. and your process becomes it becomes intuitive to you at a certain point. It becomes instructional to other people. How did you do it? I became the first believer. I blocked out the negative energy. And I said, if I'm you know, I can't have faith and fear at the same time. I can't I can't dig in and put this stuff together if I'm mm -hmm. doubting myself. So I'm going mm -hmm. to be a colossal failure. I'm going to be a colossal success. But it's going to be colossal because I'm going all in. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so here's, I think here's your answer. What, Anthony, I don't want to feel the pain. I'd rather numb myself out with, you know, some stiff alcohol. Beer. What I'm hearing you say is like, you have to believe your courage and desire to want to overcome this with your love has to be greater than the fear. And that's what, that's the attitude. And it's going to hurt like heck. But you have to have the courage to feel because when you do that, you're on this road to actually recovering. What I'm finding myself is recovering all these because in um, in shamanism, they talk about when you actually have these traumas, and this may not be going in the direction in, in your religious um, no, it's okay. persuasion, but it's... When you have these traumas, um, the, a lot of indigenous people believe that you lose a part of your soul. And that mm -hmm. part of your soul goes floating. It's just sitting there on a timeline, running mm -hmm. a separate timeline. You know, here's CJ who that. got traumatized. It's running a different timeline, not even connected to your yeah. own body. So until you go back and heal those things, those soul parts don't return. And you're not even a whole person. So if you're not willing to fight for who you are, the whole idea of your, of your book, you can't run away from you. Can't you can't run away from you. Yeah. That, that's, that, that's, you know what, when I came up with the title, right, I wanted the cover to be a person running, right? Like they're running and they're looking behind themselves about what's chasing them. But in front of them, they're standing there with their arms full, like, where are you going? <laughs> <laughs> because that's what we do. So to your right. the story about drinking, I used to drink when I was, I'm out with drink, and all I did was wake up with a headache, and the problem was even worse because I didn't <laughs> kick the can down the road. So so I tried all of that. I tried drinking. I tried messing with people and all kind of stuff. But you got to remember something. Shamanism, Christianity, Buddhism, whatever, we are spiritual beings. We radiate energy. And so now, the longer you take to deal with something, it's like it's going. That's why people have ulcers. When you keep stuff on the inside of you, it only has so far it can go. So it's eating up your pancreas, your liver, your kidneys. You got holes. You got acid burning your stomach because that stuff doesn't got nowhere to go. When you let it out, it goes. It has the whole world to dissipate in. And now you you open to yourself, man. I'm telling you, you hit this on the head. So we have taught people to run away. We are, we are emotional creatures. We were created from love. 
But then when it, 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 you know, if you've had a child or you, you know, or your mother birthed you, anything you birth going to hurt. This, this program you had, it hurt. I ain't got the money for it. I ain't never done this. It hurt. But when it come out, that's a pretty baby. <laughs> your, your, your success in life is di directly proportional to your pain tolerance. <laughs> Said like a guy from the military, but I love it. Okay, I love you. All right, you're we're like gonna have to do the job. Go Do the push up, no pain, no gain. All no right, pain, so no gain. Suck it up, <laughs> buttercup. All we right, ain't so supposed the, to be doing this. <laughs> so, in the last segment, I want to talk about um, the work. Because everyone says, do your work. And I think people are like, what's the work? So I want to actually talk about that in the last segment. Thank you okay. so much. We've been talking to an on fire Anthony Brinkley. You're on fire. You, you lit it up. You lit it up. You took me back to my childhood. I'm like, man, why are you <laughs> Why did fault. you do this? <laughs> we do it because we love the audience and we, and we want to. I love you. them too. So, okay. We'll be right back.